guys, welcome back. This is Shauna with Suitcase Princess. If you are new here, we are a family of four. Uh, we are here to help you have more fun, find more value, and have less stress in your family adventures. Guys, today I'm gonna take you along as we take the kiddos still in our uh, Washington DC fun travels. We took the girls to Ford's Theater. Now, this one, I wasn't quite sure how it was gonna go, but why don't you come along and see for yourself? We then hopped on an awesome trolley tour of DC and got stuck in a little bit of rain. I hope that you find this helpful, entertaining, or informative. If you do, please scroll on down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. This was our last full day in Washington, D.C., and having had to book all of our tickets so far in advance, we definitely knew what we were doing every day. And the way that we had scheduled that was to have one big event every day and then leave the rest of it kind of up to however we were feeling and whatever we wanted to do. So this last day, we went ahead and scheduled Ford's Theater. Now, one of the things that we do on any regular basis to try to be most successful with our kiddos is to get the very first ticket of the day opening time as close as possible to the start of the day it tends to cut down on crowds and really helps us out an absolute ton now you may think that Ford's theater is probably not the ideal museum to take your kiddos but as many of you know we are a homeschooling family and we had just wrapped up this portion in our American history study uh, so it was very handy to to be able to take the girls and to show them things that we had just spoken about because they were still very applicable, very fresh in their brains, uh, very, very uh, still with them for us to be able to discuss. Now, as you see right here, the girls, what we do, what we do in many situations, some of the things that we do is we go ahead and we get them an audio tour whenever possible. Now, one of the reasons that we do that is because my kids genuinely enjoy it and we have also found great great success having them be able to have something to hold something to touch. Usually they have a little bitty screen on them, but it keeps them entertained without having to have them completely immersed in a device or totally distracted. So we enjoy uh, springing to get them the audio tours. We almost never get them for ourselves, but for our kids, it's very handy. They've got their own little thing to do, their thing to hold, their thing to touch, pretend it's a phone, give them information, whatever. Now you'll see these screens here. One of the things that we have found gives us great success, especially with our little one, because our older one definitely has a greater attention span at this point. So we can read the information to her, read the signs, things like that. Well, Marilyn doesn't quite appreciate that as much yet. So one of the things that we have found is if we're in you know, a larger room with art or with the displays that we can, we can read, we do allow her, as long as it's within sight, to either kind of go sit against a wall or go sit on a bench if it's in the same room with us or just go wait patiently off to the side and then we will grab her. And of course, what we do with kids, guys, you can't stop. There's no way to stop and read every sign or everything. So we just try to hit the big stuff. One of the things that Marilyn is very interested in is anytime there's a screen, granted it's all like History Channel documentaries, she loves it and she wants to sit down and watch the entire thing. Well, guess what, guys? It's her vacation too. So we go out of our way to try to make sure that even the girls get to do what interests them. And if this is interesting to my five-year-old, by all means, I'm going to sit and, and watch the entire cycle of the History Channel documentary. And I there were probably a half dozen in this museum that we sat and watched every single one because that made her happy. Again, the wonderful little audio guides. Now, one of the things that I found to be incredibly surprising about DC, look at the number of people in this place. I uh, live down in Texas and I've been told that we're just so liberal and so kind of uh, crazy with our COVID precautions that that's not the case other places. And so thinking of the Northeast being so much more conservative in those COVID precautions, I was completely floored that so many people were out, so many places, so few masks, so few distancing. I genuinely was not expecting that at 
all. And granted, we went over the 4th of July holiday when it's absolutely busier. Now here, there is an entire section here because it's about Abraham Lincoln on slavery and those issues that he did tackle during his presidency. Now, like I said, we're a homeschool family, so we try to have our kids as prepared as they possibly can be when we're walking into some of these museums. And what that means is that when these topics come up, whether it's in our schoolwork or in our lives, when there's an opportunity to talk about the hard things that the nation, the hard things that some of the presidents, the hard things that the world as a whole have gone through, we do not shy away from those difficult discussions because no, they may not be able to fully understand at nine and five years old, but when we went there, that seed had already been planted. So there's a few less questions and a few less complete shock of the way that some things have gone both in our nation's history and around the world. If you guys follow us over on Making Everyday Magic, you know that I have a lot of discussions about accurate history and my goal as a parent and as a homeschooler to not uh, whitewash what has happened in the world and to give them kind of an accurate depiction of the way things were. It's very important to us as parents and as homeschoolers that we do that. So fortunately, they had already kind of been braced with the topics of Lincoln's assassination and slavery, civil war, all of those things that our nation had tackled at that point. Now, right here, they were so interested in this last little bit before you go back upstairs to see the actual theater. They were so interested in the theater clothes. Uh, they were not as interested in the conspirators and things like that. So we did move through that entire section quite a bit faster because it just doesn't interest them. And if you have a nine and a five-year-old, you know that if you lollygag on something that does not interest them, there's really no point because it will not be good or entertaining for anyone. Now, our kids are really great in the respect that they can be quiet and mindful and not touch and listen. Uh, but, you know, there's only so much of that that any of us can do. And then it's time to definitely move on. So they greatly appreciated this little section of the theater because they dance and they just love the theater. Now, after this, we did head up into actual Ford's theater and you can walk up to the balcony where, uh, where Lincoln was shot and into, you know, right in front of the stage. Very interesting, very somber attitude for sure, um, and not something that we were uh, allowed to film. So I didn't take film any of that or take any pictures because it's just one of those things I'm definitely going to follow the rules here. And my girls were super... Um, interested to learn that Lincoln actually did did finally pass away across the street. And so we had a lot of uh, discussions about that. The Peterson House is currently closed as well as the museum across the street. And I think it would have been really interesting had we been able to go uh, into those places. But that's just something to save for the next trip. Uh, in walking over to Ford's Theater, we were able to go past the, I believe it was a Presbyterian church where Lincoln had attended some services and so kind of wrapped up our, our full day of Lincoln here. Later, you'll see we're at the Lincoln Memorial all in the same day. Now, as you guys uh, know, traveling with kids can be can be a little stressful, a little hard. And one of the things that we have found great success with, success with is that we don't try to do it all. We try to hit the highlights. We try to do the big things, something to pique their interest, to keep them entertained. And then we'll cycle back at a later time. So here you see we got on our trolley tour. We were actually able to save some, save some money on these on each ticket to make it quite a bit more affordable. Uh, open side trolleys with stadium seatings. Right there we went past the International Spy Museum. My daughter was so happy. This was a great way to be able to see kind of like, you know, the, the big snippet hit the high points here without having to tire my little buddies out. We didn't even take a stroller on this vacation, which is the first one. We haven't done that. And it was just a lot of walking. I also was not prepared for the fact that DC uh, temperatures, you know, they rivaled Houston. It was just as hot, just as humid. And then with it being so busy, it honestly was pretty brutal as far as the heat went. So this trolley tour was really nice. Plus, we saved money through a uh, kind of work ticket benefit program that my husband's company is a part of. We got to see some things that we would not have seen otherwise. My daughter was very interested in the International Spy Museum, but we didn't have an opportunity to either get tickets or get over there. We didn't rent a car on this. 
trip at all. We just used mass transit. It was fun. It was perfect. It worked out really well. So this trolley tour really gave us a lot of bang for our buck because we got to do some of the things we wouldn't have been able uh, to do otherwise. We wouldn't have seen these things otherwise. One of the wonderful things about the National Mall that I did not know ahead of time is that they have these wonderful little kiosks that serve um, Italian ice and ice cream. And we partook every time we were in the mall because it was so hot. One of my absolute best tips as a parent in everyday life is pack the drinks, pack the snacks. I am almost never without a drink or snack, both for myself and for the kids, because if you've traveled with kids, you know that you need to be eating and drinking before you need it. If you wait too long, you've already failed because it is a fine line between we are still finding success and everyone is miserable and this trip needed to be over three days ago. So my tip is to always, always, always have a snack and have a drink. You guys know we carried their water backpacks, our own water backpacks as well. I also made a point to keep some fruit snacks stuffed away. There were quite a few times when Marilyn or Amelia would just be complaining about walking and I didn't even address it. I just opened my backpack, pulled out a uh, container of fruit snacks and just started handing it to them one at a time. By the time the packages were finished, we were in a different mood and everyone had forgotten that their feet hurt. So that was quite wonderful. There's one of those chaos right there, informational. We did get to make it over to the Lincoln Memorial, which was gorgeous. We had tried to walk down the day before, but it was actually shut down coming the other way, maybe for the 4th of July fireworks, having it roped off. But being able to see the Lincoln Memorial, we walked over after that and saw the Vietnam uh, Memorial Wall. It was it was really wonderful to be able to see all of these things in one day. I think that helped to really solidify the importance of of Lincoln's contribution to our country by being able to see everything in one day. It was still very fresh. They knew who he was. They knew uh, why he had a memorial. They knew that his death was very tragic. Um, It was handy being able to do it kind of all in one bubble swoop. As you can see, it was very, very busy. We were outdoors, so we did have our masks down, but we had them with us and we were ready each time. It was truly wonderful to get to share these things with our kids, but you know, it was our day that was supposed to be rainy and then it rained. We got caught in the rain. We had gone back to the hotel for just a little while. I convinced them to go back out because it had stopped for just a bit and we were able to finally make it over to the White House, which made me very happy. whenever we go. Oh, okay. Before we go. Okay. Marilyn, who's on the statue? Who is this? George Washington. Lafayette. What? The Marquis de Lafayette. What? That must be the flower. And I'm going to keep this flower till tomorrow. Cool. Love it. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed coming along with us. I hope that you can take some of our pointers, some of our tips, and apply them to your own travels with kids. Maybe it's just something really simple that you haven't thought about. I hope that you find something helpful here that will inspire you to get out and have more fun, have more value in your dollars, and then also less stress on taking your kids out. It can be really daunting and intimidating to go and do things like museums and tours and things like that with your kiddos, but I hope that this gave you a little bit of inspiration. Guys, I hope you found any of this helpful, entertaining, or informative. If you did, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up.